Hi, this is Dr. Mercola, and I want to talk to you about a very common problem. So common, in fact, that one out of three of you watching this has it, and that clinical condition is called hypertension. Now, that sounds like you might be tense. Uh, before I started med school, that's what I, I was confused, and I, I think, believe many people have that confusion. But hypertension is actually, of course, high blood pressure. And although tension or anxiety can contribute to high blood pressure, certainly, it is for the most part not the primary reason why people have high blood pressure. So the, uh, the, let me give you some of the definitions first. Typically, uh, you're diagnosed as having high blood pressure if your blood pressure reading is uh, above 120 over 80. And the first number is what's called the systolic. And, then this, and that typically should be below 120. And the bottom number is called the diastolic, and that should be, typically should be below 80. Um, so if you're in those, if below those ranges, there's not much of a, a concern. However, if you have been diagnosed with high blood pressure, it's important to understand that one of the most common risk factors for high blood pressure is weight. So if you're obese, that is going to increase your risk. But interestingly, the way we diagnose high, hypertension is through by taking your blood pressure, and that's typically done by putting a cuff around your arm. So it's important to understand that there's different cuffs, that if you are large, or especially very large, you're going to require a larger cuff. So when you get the blood pressure taken with the cuff, it's very important you look at the blood pressure cuff and make sure they typically have marks to make sure that when you wrap the cuff around that it's within that normal range. And if it's not, uh, then you need to find the right size cuff. Now this actually goes the other way too, so that if you are a small, very tiny or a small child and you need to use a pediatric cuff. So that, that's an important consideration. Um, now, it's also important to understand that uh, there are um, typically medications are used to control this. And, and the tr traditional uh, approach, that is the major uh, uh, strategy. And, and, and hypertension is really almost a dream come true for drug companies, just similar to cholesterol in that it is a drug that typically doesn't have signs or symptoms, but that is that they have developed a number of treatments for that don't change or modify or it, it all addressed the cause of the disease. And in fact, I was, I, I, to this day, I remember reading my, my medical physiology textbook that uh, when, we, when we were studying hypertension, and, and it was called Guyton, the Guyton Textbook of Physiology, and, and the, it listed that the 95% of the cause of hypertension was what they call idiopathic, means they don't know. But that's just not true. We know what the cause of hy hypertension is. For the most part, it's related to your body making too much insulin. Very similar to cholesterol. So when your body makes too much insulin, it causes your blood pressure to increase. So there are fortunately very simple ways to lower your insulin levels. And you know, folks, you can measure this. All you have to do is get, have your blood uh, tested by your doctor, a fasting insulin level, and your insulin level you want to strive for is about two or three. The other thing you want to do is to make sure that you're having a, your omega-6 to omega-3 fat ratio is correct. And most people have that ratio is about 25 to 1 because we radically improve, increase the, in, the amount of uh, omega-6 fat. So you want to make sure you lower the amount of ve vegetable oils in your diet and make sure you have a high quality source of omega-3 fatty acids. That's going to be really crucial. Now, I also want to give you a warning. Now, you know I'm opposed to taking medications and drugs. And uh, clearly, the long-term strategy is to get off of all your medications. But if you're on a medication, you certainly want to do that with a supervised healthcare professional. And if you have very high blood pressure, I hardly ever recommend the use of medications. But it is vital that you go on a medication to lower your blood pressure if it's very high because stroke is real. People die from strokes every day. Day. And if your blood pressure is too high, you are at risk for developing a stroke. And I don't know if you've ever seen anyone with a stroke, but it is not pretty to lose your brain cells. It tends to be permanent and irreversible, so you want to make sure that, you, that you, you're not un increasing your risk for that. So, so make sure you're under a, using a safe medication by a physician who's going to monitor you with those until you're able to implement these lifestyle changes that will allow you to slowly wean off the medications and get the, the cause of the problem addressed. So hopefully this, this will uh, provide you with some practical insights and some strategies that you or your family members can use to take care of this very common condition.